ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to our presentations. My name is Tomoe. My co-presenters are Tomoka and Yuna. Fortunately, we are the first presenters. <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> I have butterflies in my stomach. Uh, <laughs> of course, me too. All right, let's take a deep breath. <laughs> Good. We can do it! Yes! <laughs> By the way, have you ever seen these Japanese architectures? Uh, Japan has a, such a wonderful buildings. These are our topics. First, Tomoka will talk about cultural inheritance. Next, Yuna will introduce classical architecture. And finally, I will share with you Olympic buildings. Let's now hear from Tomoka. Good evening again. I'm Tomoka. Tonight, I'd like to tell you about cultural inheritance. How many of you have ever seen a Japanese temple? Thank you. <laughs> All Japanese people have been to a Japanese temple at least once in their life. There are two temples I'd like to introduce to you. Firstly, I'd like to start by Kiyomizu Temple, and then I'll talk about Todaiji Temple. Let's begin. First of all, let me talk about Kiyomizu Temple. Have you ever heard of Kiyomizu Temple? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Actually, Kiyomizu Temple has a Japanese traditional style. This picture is a gate in Kiyomizu Temple. After going through the gate, a visitor arrives at the main building. It was built in 1633. It was supported by 172 pillars made of wood. Surprisingly, nails were not used. The roof of the main building is high quality because Hiwadabuki, a pile of thin skins of Japanese cypress, are used. But Hiwadabuki burns easy, so it needs to be rebuilt once every 50 years to protect it from fire. In front of the main building, there is a butai stage. Butai stage is famous for people jumping down from this butai stage. In fact, 234 people have done that so far. The height is 40 feet. It's equal to a four-story building. Could you imagine jumping down from this butai stage? <laughs> Also, it is supported by 78 pillars and has three traditional characteristics. The first characteristic is nuki. Nuki is like a crossbar made of wood. Nuki is inserted into the center of the pillar. The second characteristic is a wedge. A wedge is used Instead of a nail, it's, it's padding for a space between a pillar and the nuki. Finally, the third characteristic is rocks. Granite is used because it's much harder and stronger than other rocks. These three traditional characteristics support the butai stage in order to endure an earthquake. I told you about Kiyomizu Temple. Now, let's move on to Todaiji Temple. 
Tōu Daiji Temple is a world-class temple. In particular, the main building is the largest wooden building in the world. Particular, in, excuse me. <laughs> Moreover, there is a huge statue of Buddha. We call it Daibutsu. This picture is also a gate in Todaiji Temple. After going through the gate, a visitor arrives at the main building. The official name is Todaiji Kondo. It was built in 789. The height is 160 feet. The width is 188 feet. It's absolutely enormous, isn't it? Yes. After entering the main building, there is a hole in the pillar. The size of the hole in the pillar is equal to a daibutsu nostril. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the same size hole. Now, my co-presenter, Tomoe, is going to go through this hole. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thank you, Tomoe. <laughs> so a visitor can go through this hole like Tomoe, but this hole is a little small for an adult. So probably a big person couldn't go through this hole. So please make sure you can go through this hole before you try. <laughs> <laughs> also, if, if people can go through this hole, they might be in perfect health. Moreover, there is the Daibutsu. It took seven years to complete it. The height, height is 49 feet. It's equal to about four, five story building. Daibutsu's hands are like this. So, and have different meanings. Right hand means fulfill a wish. And left hand means, don't be afraid. I've shown you Daibutsu. Now, let me explain the construction of Daibutsu. First, people who helped to make Daibutsu made a rough structure and a mold. Second, they attached the clay around the mold. After that, they took the clay off and baked it. While baking the clay, they shaved the mold off. Next, they made a space between the mold and baked clay. In the space, they poured bronze. Finally, they took the mold off and polished the statue up. That's all for building Daibutsu. To summarize, I told you about cultural inheritance, such as a traditional temple and a world-class temple. Both are Japanese representative temples. Their common points are that they are wooden, historic, and have traditional construction. If you come to Japan, please visit Kiyomizutea Temple and Todaiji Temple. Thank you for listening. <laughs> now, you know we will share with you about Japanese classical architecture. Thank you, Tomoka. Good evening, everyone. My name is Yuna. Thank you for coming to our presentation. Today, I would like to talk about Japanese-style hotels. 
There are variety types of hotels in Japan, but especially Japanese style hotels are variable traditional hotels. First, Japanese style hotel called ryokan in Japanese. All ryokan have Japanese style rooms and hot springs. These are my main topics, so let's move on to the first topic, Japanese style rooms. Japanese style rooms called washitsu in Japanese. All washitsu have tatami mat. They are made by weaving of quality straw and they have distinctive smells. Also, washitsu have closet called oshire in Japanese. It is attached to the wall and Japanese people use it to put bedding away. Next, I'd like to tell you about two types of doors. First, I'll tell you about Fusuma. Fusuma is Japanese style sliding door. It has a wood frame covered with thick paper. In the past, Fusuma was invented to keep out cold, but now it is used to separate rooms like this. The thick paper used for fusuma called karakami or fusumashi. Most karakami are white, but sometimes they have designs. Another door called shoji in Japanese. It has one side of latched wood frame pasted with thin white paper. The main difference between Fusuma and shoji are thickness of the paper. Now, I'd like to tell you about ryokan tea and snacks. All ryokan rooms have tea and snacks on the table. It's a form of hospitality, but also tea and snacks are a sign of kindness that hotel owners want guests to relax in the room. Another reason is preparation for bathing. It is good for our health to drink tea and eat snacks before bathing. Now, I would like to move on to the next topic, hot springs. All, hot, all Japanese style hotels have hot springs. Hot springs a public bus called onsen in Japanese. The history of hot springs is as long as the history of mankind. Surprisingly, the ancients used hot springs. The oldest literature, Kojiki and Nihon Shoki, also have a dis description about the hot springs. Based on these historical, historical documents, Dogo Onsen in Ehime Prefecture, Arima Onsen in Hyogo Prefecture, and Shirahama Onsen in Wakayama Prefecture are called Nippon Sandai Kosen. Nippon Sandai Kosen means the three oldest hot springs in Japan. Next, I'll share you about advantage of onsen. Onsen has many advantages. Of course, it makes our body warm and relaxed. But also, it is good for recovering from tiredness and promoting health, including blood circulation and recovery from skin problems. That's why onsen is very popular among not only young people, but also older people. Next, I'll tell you about open air bus. Open air bus called Rotenburo in Japanese. Rotenburo is popular types of hot springs in Japan. We can enjoy season, beautiful scenery, and a sense of freedom. These are main reasons why Rotenburo is popular in Japan. There are some rules before entering hot springs. People who have a tattoo 
can't enter the hot springs, it is also impossible to wear any clothes and bring with food, camera, and cell phone. In addition, guests must shower using basin before enters hot springs. It's called kakeyu in Japanese. There are some other rules after entering the hot springs. Submerging towel and hair is prohibited. Swimming in the hot springs is also prohibited. To have a good time in hot springs, considering other people is the most important. Next, I introduce about unbelievable guests in hot springs. Please look at this picture. Not only humans, but also animals love to enter the hot springs. Can you believe that? <laughs> it's absolutely amazing fact, isn't it? Jigokudani yes. Onsen in Nagano Prefecture is famous that monkeys enter the hot springs. In addition, monkeys, is Shabuten Park in Shizuoka Prefecture is famous that Capybara enter the hot springs. Only in Japan, we can see a, such an amazing sight. So if you come to the Japan, I recommend that you to visit this place. In conclusion, Japanese-style hotels have elegant traditional hotel rooms and relaxing hot springs. I love to I love the Japanese style hotel and I proud of Japanese style hotel. Thank you for listening. <laughs> Next, Tomoe will talk about Olympic Stadium. Thank you, Yuna. That was so interesting, isn't it? Good evening again, I'm Tomoe. Tonight, I'd like to talk about Olympic buildings. Do you know where the Olympics will be held in 2020? <laughs> Thank you. They will be held in Japan. Thus, Japan is preparing to create wonderful buildings for athletes and visitors. However, before telling about those buildings, I'd like to talk about the basic information. The 2020 Olympics will be held from July 24th to August 9th. The site is in Tokyo. In this presentation, I will talk about three points regarding the architecture of the 2020 Olympics. First, the main stadium. Second, two other stadiums. And finally, the Olympic Village. Today, Japan is in the process of building a new main stadium. The main stadium will show visitors Japanese style by using traditional Japanese architecture. Let's see the three interesting features. First, the main stadium will be built with Nokibi Sashi. Nokibi Sashi translates to mean eaves in English. The Nokibi Sashi blocks the sunlight and alleviates the heat. Therefore, Nokibi Sashi is necessary to make the stadium comfortable. Next, let's look at the main stadium's lighting. The lighting is a motif of Japanese-style lighting, such as bonbori, chochin, and toro. Bonbori is a table lamp with a paper shade. Chochin is a hanging lantern. Toro is a paper lantern. They cast a soft light and are relaxing for visitors. Third, a lot of wooden timbers are being used inside and outside the stadium. The wood 
which is grown in Japan, is called sugi. Sugi is Japanese sere and native species. It has been used for constructions for over 500 years. I've shown the features of the main stadium. Next, let's look at two other Olympic stadiums. Kokugikan Arine and Nippon Budokan Stadium. Japan will use these stadiums which already exist. First, I'd like to talk about Kokugikan Arine. Usually, this is used for sumo, which is kind of worth it. Visitors can see the special thing in this stadium, such as dohyo and tsuriyane. The first special thing is a dohyo. Dohyo is a link in which small wrestling bouts are held. The surface consists of sand. There is also a custom of dohyo, which means no women are allowed to enter the dohyo because it is considered a sanctuary. The second special thing is a tsuriyane. The tsuriyane is a huge roof which is suspended by two wires. The wires less than one inch wide and they give support to the whole roof which is more than six ton in weight. Can you believe it? The second stadium which already exists is Nippon Budokan Stadium. Usually, this is stadium is used for martial arts. I'd like to talk about two points, shape of the stadium and giboshi. Nippon Budokan Stadium is in the form of an octagon. This is help to all of the, all of the guests to see the games easily. Also, Nippon Budokan Stadium has a strange shape on its roof, which is called giboshi. Giboshi is a golden ornament similar in shape to an onion or a green onion flower. People imitated this shape as they believed it, it protected them from evil spirits because of the smell. <laughs> Finally, let's look at the Olympic Bridge. The Olympic Bridge will be surrounded by Tokyo Bay, so the view will be beautiful. Also, there will be many plants, so athletes can feel as if they are in nature, even though it is an arbor area. Next, let's look at Bridge Plaza. The Bridge Plaza is a represent representative building in the Olympic Bridge, which supports athletes' lives. The Bridge Plaza will be built from domestic food from all over Japan. And after the 2020 Olympics are completed, the bridge brother will be pulled down to reuse the wood for public facilities. In this way, the future generations will see the physical proof of the 2020 Olympics and learn about the history directly. In conclusion, the traditional and modern buildings of the 2020 Olympics we will show the world the Japanese style by using traditional Japanese architecture while also considering visitors and athletes' comfort. Why don't you come see them for yourself? Thank you. Did you enjoy learning about Japanese architecture? Yes. Tonight, we talked about Kiyomizunera Temple, Todai Temple, Japanese style hotel, and Olympic Stadium. These treasured original creations have traditional beauty and a national treasure. Also, for Japanese people, 
they are our inheritance forever. Be proud of this architecture. Thank you for listening. <laughs>